everyone. In this video, having talked about conjunctions, having done some translations with them, what we're going to do now is we're going to start doing some proofs with conjunctions and conditionals. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at problem 3a. This is page 33 in the book. Now, the way that it's got it is a little bit weird, but I'm going to give it to you as I would give it to you if you had it on a quiz. So here's what we've got. We've got one assumption, a, and he uses ampersands for ands. I'm going to use dots. I've got a dot b dot c. This is your one and only assumption. This is what you're given. And it says solve for this. Get a dot c. Now I'm going to remind you we've got three rules that we can use. We've got arrow out. That's where if you get an arrow and you get a left side match, you can get the right side. We've got and out. That's where if you got dots, you can break them apart. And if you've got two, and then we've got and in, which is if you've got two separate things, you can bring them together. And I'll say this, with all these problems, you should think about it in this way. With arrow out, can I do this? If so, do it. With and out, next you should move on. Can I do this? If so, do it. And then with and in, you should think, should I do this? That is to say, if you have two things, you can always stick them together, but is it worth doing? Let's take a look at this. First of all, let's see if we can do this. Now remember, things in parentheses we can't get to yet. They're trapped. So let's take a look. Do we have any, any arrows not in parentheses? No. So we cannot do this, so we're going to move on. The next thing we want to look for is do we have any dots, any ands, not in parentheses? Well, yeah, we got this. This is not in parentheses. So this means if you got a dot not in parentheses, you can do this. You can just break them apart. And so that's going to get us two things. It's going to get us this thing and this thing. And here, when we break it apart, this thing is going to get freed from its parentheses. So we're able to get two things. We're able to get just A and B now freed from its parentheses. And we're going to say how we did that. Well, we used and out. Where was our source material? Line one. And we can also get just C by itself. So that was the other side of this. What move did we do? And out. Also line one. Okay, great. The move is done. Now, uh, let's go ahead and before, as we move on, what we want to do is go back to the top of this list. Now, hopefully you can see there's no arrows here, so this is not going to happen. But just to be consistent, I'm going to say, all right, let's try this again. Can we do an arrow out? Do we have any arrows not in parentheses? Nope. Okay, do we have any dots not in parentheses now? Yeah, we got this new one here. This one's not in parentheses. What are we going to do? Break it apart. And we get two things. We get A by itself. And we say, how, that was, how do we do that? And out. Where's the source material? Line two. And we also get B. How do we do it? And out. Where was the source material? Also line two. Okay. Now, next thing. <laughs> Go back to the top of the list. Can I do an arrow out? Nope. No arrows. Second thing. And out. Do I have any dots that I can slash apart in half? Uh, that one's been done. That one's been done. There's no more left. So the next question becomes, should... I put anything together. Now we can put any two things together that we want. Now just because we can doesn't mean that we should. For example, right now I could say, oh, B dot A. And in 5 and 4. I could totally say that. It's fine, perfectly legitimate, perfectly valid even. Is there any reason to do that? No. None whatsoever. In fact, when you get to this point where you're like, okay, I've gotten all the arrows out that I can. I've broken apart all the dots that I can. What you want to ask is, at this point, is there anything that I should build? And so here's the deal. At this point, remember, here's what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to get A dot C. And so at this point, like you've done all these that you can do, you've done all these that you can do, look and see, is there anything that I should build? And if, I'll say this, if you're trying to solve for a dot, 99% likelihood that what you're going to do is you're going to take these two pieces and stick them together. So let's look for, do we have this piece by itself somewhere? Yep. Line four. Do we have this piece by itself somewhere? Yep. Line three. So guess what? All we got to do is put those two pieces together and we'll have exactly what we're searching for. So check it out. A dot C. How do we get that? And in at junction, where's the source material? So where was that A come from? Four. Where's the C come from? three. Now this problem's done. Like we did it. We got the thing we were setting out to get. 
and we cited all the reasons of how we got it. In a certain sense, this B that we got in line 5 is completely superfluous. We got it out, but we don't need it for any reason. Like, we didn't use it later on. Sometimes you'll see that you won't need something, and you might choose to say, oh, I don't even need to bother saying it. For now, I'm just going to say, just break everything out that you can, because it might happen later on that you don't realize that you're going to need something later, and you think, oh, I don't need this, I don't need to get it out. Uh, but you do, and you need to use it later. So I'm just going to say, if you can break something out, even though this line 5, like we never use line 5 ever, go ahead and break it out anyway, because it might come in handy later, even if you don't know that. Let's look now at 3B. This one's got two assumptions. We've got A dot C, assumption number 1, and then we've also got just B by itself, assumption number 2. And then it tells us, oh, here's what you want to get. You want to get this. A dot B with A and B in parentheses dot C. That's what we want. Now you might be thinking, well, can't I just jam that in there? If I'm going to get A dot B dot C, can I just jam the B in there? Nope. That's If we look at our rules that we got, we got arrow out, which is, again, you got an arrow, your left side match, get the right side match, and that doesn't really apply here. This one, and out. <laughs> the way this one works, and out. You got a dot, you can separate them into the different pieces, and then you got and in, which says if you got two separate pieces, you can stick them together. There's no way to just jam that B in there and get what we want. It's not a thing. So what we got to do is we got to do it with the rules that we've got. So first of all, I said look at this, think of this as like, can I do this? Can I do this? Should I do this one? All right, let's, let's try it. So first of all, do I have any arrows here not in parentheses? Nope, can't do that, moving on. Do I have any dots not in parentheses? I do, this one right here. So let's break it apart. This breaks down into its two separate components. We get A and C separately. And out, where's our source material? Line one. Same thing here, and out, also line one. So we've broken it apart. All right, now, next move. Any arrows to break apart? There are no arrows. Any more dots to break apart? Nope. So then we're faced with this. Should we build anything? We know that we're going to want A dot B dot C. So we're going to build the pieces of this to make it. So first of all, we need to build A dot B, and then we're going to adjoin C to it. So let's make the first thing that we need. Can we make it? We sure can. A dot B. That is half of what we need. Where do those pieces come from? Well, A came from 3, B came from 2. So that one's done. So then we're going to take this and we're going to mix this with C because we can't do an arrow out. We can't do another arrow. I mean, we could break this apart. We could, but it would just get us pieces that we already have. So there's no reason to. So this is we're building this on purpose. So then we can take this and adjoin it or combine it with C. And it looks like this. We're taking this thing and adjoining this onto it. How'd we get that? We're ending in these pieces. Where was A and B? Line 5. Where was C? Line 4. And that's the exact thing. That's the exact thing we were trying to solve for. So there it is. This problem is done. Now let's take a look at 3C. So I'm going to give 3C to you as I would give it to you if you were ever giving it to you on a quiz. So this one's a little bit more complex. So here's what we got. Line 1. D dot E. Assumption. Line 2. D arrow F dot E arrow G. This is also an assumption. And then I'm going to say, we're solving for this. Get this. This is the mission. You get this thing, you're done. F dot G. Okay, get that, we're done. Okay, now as a reminder, here's the three moves that we've got, and we're actually going to have to use all of them in this one. We've got three moves. First of all, we've got arrow out, and the question is going to be, can I do this one? Okay, so here's the way it works. You've got an arrow, you've got a left side match, you can totally get the right side. Okay, then we've got and out. Can you do this one? Do you have a dot somewhere? Break its pieces apart. And then the third move is and in. And this is a should. And I'll explain what I mean by that here again in a moment. So this one says you got two pieces, any two pieces, you can always put them together with a dot in any order. 
Like instead, I could put B.A. That would be fine if I needed to and if I wanted to. So first of all, like here, right now, and in always says you got two things you can put them together. So right now I could say, I could say in line three, oh, D dot E and brackets are nothing more than super parentheses. I could see like, oh, and in here, D arrow F and E arrow G. And in lines one and two. Is this a legitimate move? Yeah. Should you do it? No. It's a waste of time. That's why you should always go to the top of this list. Okay, always go to the top of the list. And see, all right, can I do this one? Then can I do this one? Then should I do this one? That should always be the order. So start with this. Okay, do I have any arrows not in parentheses? No, I don't. I have two arrows. There's D O F and there's E R O G. They're in parentheses. These are locked. I like to think of it like like I play a lot of video games, so I think of this. It's like you know, like in Zelda. No, you need the big key in order to get to these. Like oh, there, there they are. All right, you need some special item to unlock this. You defeat the boss first before you can go into this room. All that kind of stuff works that way. Like no, I can't get to these. There they are. Okay, and oh, look, and even there's the F and the G that I need hiding right there. But I can't get to them yet, at least with the arrow, because I don't I don't have an arrow by itself, and I don't have left side matches, so none of that stuff applies. So can I do this one? No. So I move on. Do I have any dots not in parentheses? Yeah. In fact, I've got two. I've got this one, and I've got this one. Okay, so I've got two that I can break apart. I can do this on either one of these. I can do it on line one. I can do it on line two. Which one am I supposed to do first? I'll say this, in formal logic, it doesn't matter. If you can do a thing, it doesn't matter the order in which you do a thing, as long as you can. So here, I like to do things in the order that they come first, so I'm gonna do line one before I do line two, but if you broke apart line two before line one, that's just as correct. So let's start with line one. What does it break apart into? It gets me two pieces, D and E, because you just take the dot, you get rid of it, and take the two pieces and break them apart. And then what you do is you say what you did, that was and out, where was the source material? Line one, same thing for this one. This one was also and out on line one. Okay, now I did a move. Every time you do a move, go back to the top. Do I have arrows not in parentheses now? No, that hasn't changed. Okay, but I also know there's this other dot I could slice apart here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice that apart too. So that gives me lines five and six. Okay, so we get D arrow F. Now freed from the parentheses because it's no longer adjoined to this thing. And I get E arrow G separately. Both of those are and out on line two. Because that's the move that we're doing and the source material was in line two. That's where it came from. Okay, now, go back to the top of the list. Can I do an arrow out now? So first of all, do I have any arrows not in parentheses? Yeah, I got two. I got this one, and I got this one. Now, do I have a left side match for this one? Yes, I do. Do I have a left side match for this one? Yes, I do. So which one do I need to work with first? Which set? It doesn't matter. I just said that, like as long, in logic, as long as you can do something, then you can do it. It doesn't matter the order, as long as you can. So like I said, I like to do things that come first, first, okay? But it wouldn't be wrong to do it otherwise. So let's do that here. We got this arrow, okay? Its left side is D. I got a left side match for it, which means based on this rule, right there it is. You got an arrow, you got a left side match that unlocks the right side by itself. So let's take a look. I got D arrow F, I got the left side D, which means I unlock F. I'm going to say here in line 7, hey, I get F. How'd I do that? All through the magic of arrow out. Now then I'm going to cite my sources. Like, where did I get these pieces? Where was the arrow that I used? Well, the arrow that I used was in line 5. Okay. Where was its left side match? Oh, its left side match was in line 3. So that's where that came from. Okay, that one's done. Now I would say go back to the top of the list, but we already know that there's this E, arrow, G, and E to work with. So let's work with them. So that gets us... Okay, we got an arrow here, its left side is E. We got a left side match here, which means we can unlock G. So let's get that G. What did we do? What move here? Arrow out. Okay, where was the arrow that we got this from? Well, the original arrow that we just used was in line six. Its left side is E. Where was its left side match? Line four. So we're gonna say four, so that's good. All right, so look, now we finished a move. Let's go back to the top of the list. Any new arrows, not in parentheses? Nope, we've taken care of all those. Any dots, not in parentheses. Nope, we've taken care of all those. So everything's been broken down. Like all the letters that were here in the beginning, they're, we actually ha now have all of them by themselves. Like all the individual pieces, we've broken everything down. Okay, it's not like we took a Lego set and took everything apart. 
Okay, so now, can I do this? We already, I already said no. Can we do this? Also, no. Should I build anything? Now, two things. One, we can take any of these eight parts and slap, slap them together. Any of them. We can do that, but notice that's why I didn't say can. Should we put things together? Well, remember, the thing that we're trying to get here is this, f dot g. And like I said, if you're trying to get a dot, there's a 99% likelihood. I could think of some exceptions, but I just want to, I want this to become a habit here. If you're trying to get a dot, look and see, do I have this piece by itself? Do I have this piece by itself? If you do, if you have these pieces by themselves, do this move. Just put them together. Do we have those pieces? Do we have F? Yeah, line seven. Do we have G? Yeah, line eight. So what do we do? Line nine? Just slap them together. F dot G. What move did we do there? We stuck an and in there. And then we just say, where do we get the pieces from? Well, F came from line seven. G came from line eight. There it is, it's done. And here actually, we used all three of these moves. Okay, we have a bunch of and outs, a couple of arrow outs, and our final finishing blow was an and in. Now let's take a look at number 3D. So first of all, at line number one, we got H dot I, arrow, J dot K, that is assumption numero uno. Then we've got line two, just I dot H. That's assumption number two. And then we've got from there, we're solving for this. We are solving for just J by itself. Okay, great. Now, as a reminder, we have these three moves in place. We've got arrow out, which the question is can. Can I do it? Do you have an arrow? Do you have a left side match? Well, then get the right side. Then we got and out. The question there is can. You got two things together with a dot, break them apart. Okay. And then we've got the third move that we've got, at least right now, which is and in. And it works this way. Do you have two pieces? Stick them together if you should. Not necessarily if you can. Just because you can doesn't mean it's going to get you anywhere. And again, maybe you could put them together in an order that you may not expect. All right, so let's do that here. So first of all, what we want to look for, and so this is this is the way to go through these problems. Okay, first of all, do I have any arrows not in parentheses? Yes, I do. Right here. Now, I have an arrow not in parentheses. Now look at its left side. Its left side is H dot I. Do I have a left side match? You might think here, ah, oh, this looks pretty close. That's I, I dot H. It's the same. It's basically the same thing. Uh, does this un does this unlock it? No. No, it doesn't. It's very similar. In fact, it's logically equivalent. It does not unlock this. Okay. And it, the analogy here, it's kind of like you've got the right key, but you've got the key and you're inserting it upside down. Or <laughs> this reminds me of. Have you ever inserted like a, a like a U, something in a USB? Like I don't know about you. Every time I've ever like taken like a USB and tried to put it in a computer, like the first time it doesn't work, so I flip it over and that doesn't work. But then I flip it over again and you know, finally the, somehow the third time it works. Kind of what's going on here? Like you got the right thing and you got the right pieces. They're just it's like your keys upside down. Okay, so you got the right pieces, but the keys upside. It doesn't fit exactly right because the key's not going to fit upside down. So if just for now, for simplicity's sake, I'll just say, no, we don't have this. We can't unlock this because we don't have it exactly. It has to be exact. Do we have that? No. So we move on. Do we have any dots not in parentheses? Now we got three dots here, here, and here. Are there any not in parentheses? This one, not in parentheses. So what are we going to do? Break it to bits. So break it down. We get line three and four. It's parts, I, H. What we did there, and out for both, and we broke that down from line two. Okay, any arrows to break apart? No. Any ands to slice in half? No, we just did that. Anything we should build? Yeah. <laughs> right now we literally have the pieces broken down to build this left side that we do need. So it's not that the goal here in the end is an and that we need to build, but the thing we need right now. We want to unlock this arrow. Like there's that J right there. That J that we need is right there. But in order to get to that, we have to unlock this. Do we have the pieces to build this? Right here. 
So let's build it in the right order. And like I said, this is the equivalent of taking the key that we have upside down out and just turning it over. So let's build h dot i. What move did we do there? And in. Where were the pieces? Four and three. So again, we kind of just turned line two over. Now later on, there is a move that we'll learn that allows us to just flip these immediately. That's the commutative property, but we don't know it yet or you don't know it yet. So now we've got h.i, we just built it. All right, now, go back to the top. Do I have any Do I have any arrows, not in parentheses? This has been true since the beginning. Do I have a left side match now? Yeah, I do. What does that do? It unlocks j.k, not in parentheses. What move did we do there? Arrow out. Where was the arrow that we used? It's the arrow that's been sitting there since line one. Okay, where was the left side match that we built? Line five. Great. Do I have another arrow now? Go back to the top of the list. Do I have another arrow that I can... It's not in parentheses, for which I have a left side match. N neither of those, no. Do I have any dots that, I, that are new that I can slice apart? Uh, right here. There it is. So what are we going to do? We're going to slice this apart. We get two pieces. J, K. Where did we get those pieces from? We did and out on line six. And we did and out on line six as well. Now wait a minute. What were we trying to get? J. Did we get J? Yeah. Once we got this, we're done. Now what about this K here? It's just extra. It's like the packaging, like when you get something and you got the packaging and you throw it away. Like this is here, you don't need to get rid of it, it's not wrong. Now if you realize that you don't need it, you could you could toss it away. All right, You don't even have to do line eight at all but we did the job and we have all the pieces that are accounted for. So if you did this, like yeah, solve for J, we did. All right, there's this, there's, here's a bit of leftovers. This is kind of like the, the remainder, if you remember doing like long division. This is fine, you don't need to get rid of this, okay? In fact, I encourage you to go ahead and like, if you can break something down, go ahead and break down all the pieces. You might recognize, oh, I don't need this. So I completely don't even put this in here at all. Oh, that's right, that's true. You don't need this and you don't have to put it here and this is just as correct. But if you're not sure, go ahead and just break it all down. As long as you get what you need, you're golden. So everyone, that was doing problem number three from the book that deals with doing proofs with conjunctions and conditionals. What we're going to do next time is more problems from the book, doing proofs of conjunctions and conditionals. See you next time.